I don't really have a great intro. All right. So we're live. Hi, guys. How are you? Welcome. I am uh, I'm here today, special episode with uh, Andy Pope, professional golfer. It's the first time I've had an opportunity to speak to a professional golfer in length. So I have a whole bunch of questions about, uh, well, all sorts of different things. So I made some notes. I was knee deep in the OWGR pages last night. Uh, got some good nuggets. Okay. And we're just gonna get we're just gonna get rolling. Andy, how are you today? Say hello um, to the folks. Hey everybody. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm uh, for, looking forward thank you, to uh, thank, you, thank you so much for being here. I yeah. really appreciate it. Dude, the this big, guinea pig really of the, the biggest proportions here. Yeah. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, good Thanksgiving. Wife worked, so uh, me and the kids were at the golf course all day just hanging out. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, we had a good time. You? Yeah, it was it was quiet. We used to have a, a big uh, Nagel Thanksgiving every year, but that's kind of – it's gotten too big. There's too many grandchildren and great-grandchildren now, so we don't have, like, the facilities to host that many people anymore. So everyone's kind of just doing their own thing, uh, spending time with their – their other families and wives and spouses, everything else. But no, it was good. It was, I had a nice, I had a good time. All right. So I don't know where I want to start. I was doing some research on you last night. Uh, can you confirm your birthday is March 3rd? Pisces. Is Pisces, correct. Yeah. Wow. Do you know, who, do you know who you share a birthday with? Like, do you know what famous people are also yeah, March March 3rd? who was that? My sister-in-law, Kate. That she's not. She didn't make the list. You sure? Um, <laughs> thought it was Upton. Um, no, that's it. I, I don't got anybody. All right. So you got Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone. Oh, yeah. Do you know yeah. who that is? I thought I was going to say light bulb. No, that was Edison, Jersey guy, by the way. Um, yeah, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. I wonder if the Bell family is like Kate's. Like Steve Jobs now, because they invented the iPhone, and maybe that kind of trumps the original telephone. I could um, see something. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. Hell of a birthday. When was he born? I don't know the year. I just know it was March third. Right. It was a long time ago. Perfect. Uh, Jackie Joyner Kersey, if you're another professional athlete, the the runner. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just a whole ass. Yeah. Yeah. March third. It's a good yeah. day. Uh. Notable hottie, Jessica Beale. Jessica Beale. All right. There we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. And Happy Gilmore fame, Julie Bowen. Played Happy Gilmore's girlfriend. And, oh, and, and Happy Gilmore. So how about that? A little, little golf connection there. All right. Um, that's all tell- March 3rd. That's not great. I'm not going to lie. I thought we could have done better. Nice lineup, but. That's not a terrible lineup. You know, else? You, do you know what else happened on March 3rd, this day in history? 1991, you were seven years old. You're at your birthday party. You're blowing out candles. Do you know what happened in the world that day? The bombing. No, no bombing. The Hurricane Andrew. Nope, not the hurricane. It's obscure. I mean, what's not that obscure? But that was the... uh, Trevino won the Buick Open. (laughs) No, that was the... uh, You're killing me. That was the uh, the Rodney King uh, incident. Okay. Shout out to Rodney King. Good to see things have changed. Uh, we don't have those types of problems anymore. Also, shout out to the LAPD, just so we get both sides. Um, all right, so I want to start. Like, uh, you grew up. You grew up in Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah, West Suburbs. All right. So when you're like, when did you start playing golf? Like, were you just a I kid? Super young. Yeah, yeah, like. Two, three, picked up a club, had an older brother. I'm the youngest. So, like, was in it. My grandfather was a member at Medina, and my mom was a member at Medina. And my dad, who didn't play golf, you know, obviously became a member at Medina. But yeah, so I grew up out there. And yeah, I mean, I'm playing sports growing up, but I was, I was around golf more than your average kid. Okay. So when you're, 10 years old or 12 years old. Are you just like this sick 10, 12 year old golfer? Like you already, like you already knew like the path. 
yeah, like I'm playing out at Medina with these guys. I'm kind of the youngest of the crowd that was there. My brother was six years older than me. And the other guys, you know, John Castellney, you know, CJ Coral, these guys were 10 years older than I was. I remember my mom was always telling a story. I was, I think I was like seven, you know, and I'm shooting even par, eight years old, shooting even par. At Medina. And, at Medina. And I tell my mom, you know, she says, hey, we got to leave at three o'clock. And I come in at three o'clock. I said, hey, my friends are going to bring me home. She's like, what do you mean your friends are going to bring you home? I'm like, I'm playing with Joe Seppi. This guy's name was Joe Seppi. I shit you not. Uh -huh. Right. And so she's like, tell him to come in here. <laughs> so he comes walking in. He's like, hey, what's up? We're hanging out with your son. He just shot, you know, 37. We want to, he's cool. We're, we're playing with him. We want to, you know, I'll bring him home. I can drive. My mom's like, you got it. So, yeah, I mean, I was out there playing. I think I remember winning like the club championship, you know, against all the 18 year olds, 16 year olds. My brother's playing. I think I was 12 or 11, you know, and so it was like right then. I always remember. I told uh, one story, my brother will kill me, but whatever. We played the, you know, the Glen Ellen Open. It was like him and uh, his buddy, Carl King, they're the seniors going to be captains on the, the golf team. And I'm in sixth grade and I come in and wax them. Really? So he was, it killed him. But. Uh, All right. So you're making a name for yourself as this, this wonder kid, more or less. Or can you have like a traditional high school life or what is, what is life like? Like, what is life like when your life is like that? Um, you know, I was traveling a bunch, right? Yeah, it was fun. Like I was traveling a bunch, playing a bunch of sports, doing good in baseball, doing, but I mean, playing the AJGAs back then when you're in high school, like I was traveling with my mom all over and my dad and they would take me places. It was so cool. I mean, I'm leaving school. Kids are in high school and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm out to Florida. You know, I'm going to play in this tournament. And everyone's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, I'm heading to Florida. going to go play in this tournament, yada, yada. I ended up winning um, an AJGA in Indiana, I think when I was 16. And that, you know, back then that was huge. So next, you know, I got U of I, Michigan State, you know, they're tapping at the door. Everyone's calling and it's really cool experience. You know, I guess that was, I say that's one of the coolest experiences, you know, when you're getting recruited to go play um you know golf which i wanted to play or a d1 sport you know and then i ended up going to xavier i was gonna um, ask you about that that's on the list yeah yeah i went uh, i played an ajj in cincinnati xavier coach is out there he's like hey i'd love for you know you to come i was with my dad my dad's like let's go check it out i'm like xavier you know uh, okay you know and i went and checked it out smaller school and you know it honestly it was a few things that kind of led up to that but uh yeah it was just it was pretty cool and, you know, lived a pretty fast, pretty fast upbringing, a lifestyle from that age. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a landscape business with my dad and, you know, it sounds like the Nagels have a big family. The Popes are fairly large and they're known for enjoying their themselves. So um, really, uh, I mean, couldn't have asked for a better, better childhood, to be honest. All right. So, oh, well, that's good transition, bringing us to Xavier. It was uh was Jason Kokrak a big thing back then or it, just another guy? No, for sure. He was, he was, I mean, dude, he could pound it. He could pound it. I mean, I always tell some stories. You get in a team meeting, coaches trying to explain some strategy. Hey, let's hit it here. Let's hit, you know, everybody, let's knock it down the fairway this side. Jay's like, I can knock it straight over the fucking trees. You know, we're all like, we know, we know we're not, he ain't talking to you, you know? And so it was wild because he would shoot 78 and then come back and shoot 63. Okay. You know, and you're like, Whoa. And yeah, I mean, he, he's always putted it and, and wedged it really nice. And so, you know, he drives it, I think as good as any of those guys that bomb it out there. So we've all been saying it's, you know, just a matter of time. And once he won that first one, um, I talked to him after the Zoza. I told everybody, I'm like, dude, he's going to win. He's going to win five to 10 times in the next three years, four years. And everyone's like, you're crazy. And I mean, he's won three times now. And I'm yeah. like, hey, he's going to win more. He's putting it awesome. I asked him, uh, I asked him, we played a practice round at uh, Torrey. And I was like, what the hell did you change? I saw your stats are like unbelievable. He's like, yeah, I added like two inches to my putter. I'm like, okay. what? That's it? 
Yeah. He's like, yeah, I added like two inches or an inch. I'm, like, I'm using like a 36 incher now. I'm yeah, like, there, was, there was something with um, dude, somebody like, like a caddy, maybe his caddy or somebody was, somebody taught him like how to read greens or something. And then all of a sudden his putty. He loves the man. Totally I like, love that guy. His, um, it's probably D Rob. I mean, his caddy, he played awesome dude. So um, maybe he's just got a different, better feel for it out there, but. It's been really impressive to watch, to be honest. All right, let me ask you a question that's kind of like DFS related. I've always put poke rack in this. Um, whenever he's at a golf course that has bent grass greens, like my uh, my ears perk up. It's like, oh, this is a good spot to play poke rack because he won Colonial, which is bent grass, and he won the Zozo, which was on bent grass. And people give me shit about it because it's like, why are you focusing so much on something as minute as the grass type? But can that can is that a coincidence or can that make a difference? That's one thousand percent dead on. I mean, guys grew up on certain type of greens. People know how to put them. When people come down to play in Florida right now, I got a buddy flying in from Chicago tonight. We're gonna play tomorrow on the member guest. I mean, you get on some Bermuda greens compared to the bent that he's been playing on. You're not going to be able, you know, he doesn't play the grain properly. And so I 100% think there's something to that. Guys play different types of grass. I mean, look at Tiger on the West Coast. I mean, he put it unbelievable on Poana, better than anyone, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I would say, I mean, he grew up in the Ohio, you know, Cleveland area. He's growing up on bent greens. Like, anytime I get to bent greens, I'm always excited. So, all right. So, if anybody ever wants to give me shit about when I'm talking about grass types, Dude, here first. I'm telling you, especially when it comes to like playing in this Bermuda stuff. I remember like I was talking when I was growing up, coming down here, come down from Chicago with my parents. We go to Mission Inn, I play in a tournament, I'm striping it, and I can't make a putt, and I'm three putting every single hole. I can't figure it out. My parents don't know what's going on because they don't know what the Bermuda greens are. And I'm telling them, I'm like, dude, I just, you know, I'm, I'm hitting three footers. I think it's straight in. I didn't, you know, broke left. Never knew what it was. When people come down and experience Bermuda, even, even chipping, but I'm telling you, like, like reading a Bermuda green and putting on it past palm, whatever it is, like there's a, there's an art to putting and especially on different types of surfaces. So for sure, I think there's definitely something to it. That's what I thought. Um, thank you for confirming that. All right. Before I get into your, uh, like your career here and some of the some of the highlights that I found. The lack of. No, no, no. We're we're, we're all we're all positive here. We're gonna oh, do some we're gonna do some negative stuff later. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot that was at the end. Um just some general just some general I wanna get these general questions out of the way because who the hell knows where some of this stuff will veer to. Have you ever okay, if I were you, this is something that I would do. And I don't know if this is something that you've done or would do or do you ever just show up at a golf course, some public golf course, latch on with a twosome, and by like the third hole, they're just look at you and be like, "Who the fuck is this guy? You should, you should be like a pro golfer." Like, do you ever, you ever do something like that, or has something like that ever happened? Maybe another pro, the two of you go out together and you get paired up with a couple, of, you know, dimwits like me and my brother, and just kill it. Ah, uh, no, pretty rare, especially these. No, it hasn't happened in a long time. I mean, it makes me think of a story when I tried to do, you know, one time go play some guys, you know, and just pretend I wasn't anybody. And by the fifth hole, they were like, we obviously know who you are. So, this is, <laughs> you know, we're not going to press all these bets. It's a little uh, Tim yeah. Cup situation. Oh, okay. uh, that Klein Creek with Sturmbo. Never forget <laughs> that. Day I never want to live down, but uh, yeah, no, haven't played too much. Like, if I'm going to play golf, um, it's very rare I'm going out something like that. Like, I'm, I'm going out and I'm playing a match with buddies. Okay, I'm playing right. with buddies, or I'm playing with my kids. So. I'm just wondering if, like, if if you showed up at Paramus Golf Course, and like, I just, I don't, I just don't know how somebody would react to that. Like, who the hell is this guy? This yeah, no, I, I tell you what was Wow, you're really good. <laughs> we went um gosh, where was it? We went uh two years ago, we went to Whistling Straits. Mm -hmm. And I took a group of buddies up there. One of the guys, Dezingle, he's from the same town I'm at. He plays mm -hmm. uh hockey, and the other guy was Phil and Pecarella. 
Phil's coming from Chicago right now, but we go up there and I'm like, let's play the back. You know, I want to play the back. And the caddies were like, no chance. Like, we don't let anyone back there, yada, yada, yada. Like, uh-huh. you won't break 77. Oh, the back tees, not the back yeah. nine. I'm sorry. Yeah, the back tees. And I'm just like, okay. Okay. Like, what's the bet? 77? Like, <laughs> I'll bet all your loops. I break 77. I'll be on the back tee. If not, I'll give everybody, you know, double what we should. They're like, oh, man. You know, they end up not letting us play the backs. I play one up. I think I was, like, even. We finished in the dark. Lost a ball on 18. The guy's like, you need this putt. I'm like, why? He's like, I got to bet you're going you're gonna to shoot even, like a big bonus. But, yeah, that was probably the only time recently. And they were like, holy shit, we don't get that out here normally. Like, guys want to play. And it's a – I mean, I think we teed off at like two and it was summer. It was like a six-hour round. It was brutal. Okay. Uh, that's good. That's a good story. That's a good story. All right. Uh, uh, I don't want to ask. That's that's boring. Do you know – um? Do you, do you take in any golf content? Do you listen to any podcasts or do you read anything or are you, do you know what's going on in the world? I mean, like, I'm, I'm reading a little bit. I don't really listen to too many of the podcasts, but I know what's going on. I watch and keep in. I mean, I got enough. What do you got? No, no, I'm just, do you know, Um, this will lead into my next question, but do you know uh, Andy Johnson who t- has the fried egg? Yeah. Yeah, Friday. Like, a you know, he's Chicago a Chicago guy. guy. I know they're Chicago guys, and I know I've just – I know I've, I've written some funny stuff to him on Twitter just back and forth about uh, some of their stuff about Medina. Okay. Well, he's – um on the, on his podcast, The Shotgun Start, they refer to you as uh, Mr. Golden Tee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to ask you about uh, Golden Tee, the arcade game, that mm-hmm. apparently you are a bit of a shark – in that uh, regard as well, or well, like, what's the best know. story? Best story, best score. I didn't no, like, wait. How do know? How do? How would somebody from the outside know that you are a tremendous golden tee player? I or mean, just because he's. You guys a, might know. You guys might know. Tea world. There's a whole golden golden tea community. You know, shout out to my golden tea community. Those guys. Uh, there's a whole golden tea tour. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I just, uh, I grew up in a bar playing golden tea. And so when I would travel for golf, I'd be with my brother. He'd be caddying. Next thing I know, we'd go to a bar so we could play golden tea. Mm-hmm. After we're done, have some drinks. And that was kind of like our thing. And uh, when I would travel, you know, if I was going to go out after getting done playing golf and I want to go have a beer and let off steam, I'm like, where can I go? I'd get on this Golden Tee app. I could find a bar, you know, there's, you know, Dick and Moe's down the road. I'd hit up that place, go play some Golden Tee. When I moved to Orlando, um, I met some guys and it was like the whole, you know, I thought I was good. And then these guys were like whole different level. You know, guys are playing, they're sitting at the bar, not drinking, playing for seven hours straight. You know, I'm watching this guy just beat the fucking ball, beat the ball, beat the ball. I'm like, holy shit, he's a machine. Uh-huh. So, you know, I'm playing against those guys for, you know, a couple of years when I lived downtown in Orlando. So, like, my game became good. Not nothing crazy, crazy good, but, like, yeah, I mean, so the next thing I know, I'm in this, you know, community of Golden Tee guys. These guys travel. They got all sorts of stuff. They got tournaments once a month. Um, I don't know anything about this. It's an awesome community. I met some of my good buddies from it. The guys in Evansville, Indiana, um, Shelby Meisler and Andy. I met those guys. I still talk to these guys to this day. They come and meet me at the Evansville event. You know, when that first happened, the United event it was 2013 or something. And uh, yeah, the Golden Tee community is huge. So I just, I grew up playing it. And, you know, all of a sudden it's still something I, uh, I meet these guys all the time. I'll go to different cities. When I played um, BMW this year with AJ Przinsky, you know, next thing I know, I get on the first tee, I see this guy, and I'm like, who the heck? I'm like, I know him. One of our Golden Tee buddies, he's like, bro, let's go. I'm here to watch you for 18 holes with AJ, talk some shit. He's like, I want action. I was like, I'm taking your action, (laughs) which I did. He wanted to take a picture of it. I was like, that has to be a donation. But, yeah, I mean, best 100 I ever donated. That's that's okay. Uh, Well. 
so yeah yeah i played a i played a bunch um yeah they come down here in orlando for the uh golden tea tournament and you live in orlando now yeah i've been in orlando for 13 12 years i lived there for a year back in uh like 2000 2000 or 2001 2002 and uh I worked at the Celebration Golf Club. Is that still down there? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I worked over there for a little bit and some lobster place, some, like, lobster buffet place at night and the Celebration Golf Club during the day. The but, old uh, all right. Uh, all right, what do I want to ask you next? Uh, you mentioned your brother uh, was caddying for you. Is he, like, your regular caddy? No, no, he hasn't caddied for me in a bit. Um yeah, no, he used to caddy for me, caddy for me the first time I made it through Q school, you know, but he's, uh, he's taken over my dad's landscape business. So, you know, once I get through Q school, he's like, okay, well, you know, good luck. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I can't, um, so yeah, I've just used some various guys. Last two years I used a buddy of mine, Ryan Gildersleeve. Awesome dude. Was a okay. good player. Um, I used Joe Hamel for, that was one of the best, you know, he was 18 years old. I had just met him. He worked at the club and he caddied for me. Um, U.S. Open qualifier and me and him make it. And I'm like, let's go to the U.S. Open. And I took him to three more in a row. And he was just like, this is, I awesome. know we're going to, I'm going to get to that. I, yeah, I, 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 I got to ask you about that. Yeah. Caddies. I've had a bunch. They've all been awesome. Love pretty much every one of them. Always been a guy that like tries to treat the caddies fairly well. I've seen some guys are just total pricks out there to their caddies and it's just tough to watch. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I've always had a fairly good relationship with all my guys, even when they're not caddying. I got to ask you a question on behalf of my, uh, my younger brother. Uh, we were playing, I, he was out in San Diego and I was out there. We were playing golf uh, like the week of the U S open or whatever. And you know, he's giving me, he's giving me advice. He's giving me yardage. He's all into being a caddy. And he mentions like, man, I'd love to be a, be a caddy for like a really good player. And I'm like, yeah, well, those are like, those are hard jobs to get. You know, it's a real Costanza, you know, <laughs> you know, those, those are, those are tough jobs to get. They don't just fall off trees. So my brother loves golf. He's, a, you know, he's getting into, he's about your age. Um, like, could he be could he be a caddy, or is it it's way more complicated than he can possibly comprehend, or could he come carry a bag for you and you'd be fine? I mean, first of all, your brother's my age. What the? F I think so. God bless it. I'm missing this. He might be a year. He might be a year. Uh, young, older. Uh, might be a year older. I mean, it's. Definitely, it's a weird, it's a, it's a whole weird world in there. It's something he could get into. It's, um, I mean, the play, if you want to get there, you got he'd have to go to a Monday qualifier with myself, something like, you know what I mean? Like you got to get up, pick a horse on a Monday qualifier and start going, you know, be hard for someone to just straight up offer anybody to caddy on any tour without anything but it's something you could definitely do there's dudes that new guys come in all the time um i was you just go to monday qualifiers and there's there's pros there trying to qualify that don't have don't have caddies so Dude, just... did the rsm qualifier that thing was loaded 156 guys and i'm not kidding i bet you 120 of them had corn fairy status or pj tour status right okay. so the field is loaded with players 50 percent, maybe Probably less. Seven, 60, 70 percent of the guys had didn't have caddies. Really? So you could show up to that, sit there, and be like, "Yo, I'll carry your bag for whatever, fifty bucks. Let me just be there with you, whatever. Like, give me the chance." And yeah, I mean, he could go pick up, you know, all sorts of guys. That's where I ran into a caddy who I like, which was something I would like to even just announce that stinks talking about caddies is. Um, a lot of the guys, so like from the Corn Ferry or Nationwide Tour, when they move up to the PGA Tour, I mean, I heard out of the 25 guys that got cards, you know, 19 of those caddies are already gone or are gone. They didn't take their caddy with them. Yeah. Or they got canned already. Really? Yeah. And like, it's such a weird, 
you know, I, I, you know, I just say it, I've never gotten a PJ tour card, so I can't say it, but you know, I just, I see the hard work. Some of the guys dedicate to some of the guys and like, it would be a tough thing. You know, I would never, you know, it'd be tough to do, but like you start getting all these other people in your ear telling you what to do and who you need and this and that, and this guy can help you. And he knows this and knows that. And it's like, so yeah, it's always a tough gig. I mean, I, you, you hate to see it. So there's, there's a lot of the guys that are on the corn ferry are the same dudes over and over. And I, it's something that I've always thought, I, I always thought it sucked, I guess I'd say in that, like, you know, just, you work, you, you know, some of these guys, especially just work two seasons for the corn ferry. You just work two straight years. Your guy gets on the PJ tour and says, Hey, thanks. I'm going to go take Nagel's brother now. <laughs> Oh, well, in that were the case, I probably would have feel too bad for him. I got this guy Nagel's brother. I heard he's great. I'm gonna go. Oh, you know. You know, I wouldn't put it past my brother to show up at Tory Pines for the Monday qual for the Monday Q at Tory. Yeah. He knows that he knows that golf course. He should. I've come out and done that. That one's loaded too because a lot of guys aren't getting in. So you're gonna have a lot of guys that aren't getting in, and you're gonna have a lot of guys that play on the Corn Ferry or that have PJ Tour status that aren't in the event, you know, give it like a, I don't know, DJ Trahan. Yeah. You know, DJ Trahan, I played with him in Vegas, you know, he'll be out there. He's lugging his own bag, you know, so your brother to convince him that, you know, son of the swing surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> I believe. Um, so that's yeah, another shotgun start reference. There's, there's a chance. Um, but yeah, I don't, it's, it's a different, uh, you know, players are finicky, man. You get some players that, you know, like, uh, you know, I've, I've just heard so many stories about, you know, what's his face? It, um, I forget his name, but, he'll, you know, he'll fire you, up, you know, in two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's just, you know, some guys, some guys are in it, you know, and you're in it together and you're, you're way to go. Other guys are week to week, month to month, don't care. Like, you know, if they're not playing good and they're, you know, so yeah, there's, there's, there's turnover for sure. So I, I just think that there are some guys that just, they have like one of their buddies carrying the bag for them or their brother who may or may not have golf experience or whatever. They just, they, they want to have somebody that they're comfortable with. I just think there's a, I'm not saying that there's an opening and he wants to go and do that. I was just, just I, I wanted to ask the question because I thought it was, yeah, no, I mean, you get, uh, it's interesting because we get guys, I mean, I remember my first year, my man, he's over at uh, Sage Valley now, but Matt Fousey, he came from Augusta with some of the Augusta guys, you know, you got these awesome kids that are working over at Augusta. Mm -hmm. We've got some guys that um, have come to Aug from Augusta and they'll come caddy on the corn ferry and then boom, you know, next thing you know, some over on the PGA. So yeah, it's, you got, you got dudes that come and do it every year for sure. You just got to go and, uh, you know, it's just players are looking for different stuff. So, what's your? Uh, you have a home course. You have like a you member somewhere. Do you want to talk about it? I can't see that. Orange tree. There it is, right there. It's just a picture. You wouldn't be able to read it. Oh, that picture uh, was on your hat. Orange tree. Oh, this is no. This is. Anyway, I don't even. I you've been there. You've been there a while. Uh, we bought our house like, uh, eight years ago. We've been here for 10 years. I joined me and Oppenheim did. When Ralph I, Oppenheim? Yeah. When I first got on a nationwide, we played that year and then we were like, we got to join somewhere in town. So we both joined Orange Tree, um, played here for like two years and I bought a house in 13. So okay. I've been out here for yeah almost 10 years now. Place is awesome. It's, uh, best greens. I mean, we just played today. Greens are lightning. They're perfect. The, uh, it's tight like it's unfair not unfair tight but it's it's tight so you, you know you're hitting it out of bounds it's not like you're hitting into a hazard or you're hitting into the woods you're hitting it out of bounds so well, you know, uh, i think it's built on like 95 acres so this place is just lined with houses oh one of those yeah so well, you were 42nd in driving accuracy this past year did you know that i did not i you look at your numbers uh, some of them, yeah, we tracked them on a different thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, 42%, that's pretty good. Like, but you know, for how I'm not hitting it as far as some of these other guys, I need that to be like top 10. I didn't want to mention the driving distance. I was going to let, I was going to let that slide. Dude, that had to be like 190th. Uh, you were 148 in driving distance. 
out of one fifty one. No, I don't know how many. I don't know out of how many. But like one forty nine, probably. Are, how? I didn't. I I didn't look this up, so I wanted to ask. Are how would you describe yourself as a putter? Are you an excellent putter? Are you a good putter? Or are you a below average putter? Um, in terms of myself, I'm putting against my peers or putting against, I mean, obviously I'm a good putter. Because, okay. Putting against your peers in yeah. comparison to other people that you're competing with. I would say I'm an average putter. I need, I, that's the one thing I always talk about is making more putts. I made some putts today. I putted nice today. I had eight birdies and an eagle. There you um, go. But yeah, I think I put it. I would say I'd say I put it at least in the middle, if not a little bit better. And no, in the middle. Just based on what I saw in the numbers, you know, I'm not really a numbers guy, but I wanted to do it for the sake of asking this. And don't get offended, but it looks like you're more accurate than distance. I'm not sure if you're a great iron player or not, but you're an excellent scrambler. So I was curious if the putting matched. So it seems by looking at your numbers that maybe the, I guess the weakest part of your game is iron play. Would, would you agree with that or you would not agree with that? See, that's where the stats are so misleading. Okay. Talk and, to me. So we were tracking stats. So like when I'm playing in a tournament and the pins on, let's say four paces from the front, Mm -hmm. and you don't want to go long and i hit this thing 10 inches on the front fringe or i hit it on the front and it spins back 100 out of 100 golfers pro golfers are putting it because i'm on the fringe i got 12 feet okay that's going down in the books as a missed green and a one putt because i'm two putting yeah and so you know i'll go back and i'll look you know and i'm like what do you mean the guy only said i hit 12 greens Mm -hmm. like, it's 16 <laughs> you know i'm like no no i had nice putt. you know and then i'm like wait the guy didn't give me the the green on on the 14th hole i'm like dude that was an eagle putt for 12 feet <laughs> i'm like you know i'm like i didn't even chip it you know i'm like that doesn't like you have to change the stat i understand a green is a green and not a green is not a green but like yeah it has to be relative if a if a pro golfer puts it 100 out of 100 times I don't care what you're calling it. It's a green in regulation and that's a two putt. Okay. So, because right. I remember my first year um, on the nationwide, at one point I was number one in putting. Uh, okay. And that I'm like, that'd be sustainable, but that's. I was like, how could I be number one in putting and be 89th on the, the money list? I'm like, I got to be the worst ball striker <laughs> on the history of the tour. I don't want to say anything, but yeah, yeah. So no, that's it, it. That's why me and uh, me and my buddies are always talking like that would be the opposite. I would say, no, I, I, I strike it well. I actually, you know, I would say putting is almost my weakness. Okay. All right. So that's where I think, and we were, we were having a lot of these arguments um, earlier this year, just talking stats and like going through it because people we were, you know, I was doing it with, I was doing it with my buddy, Ryan, his caddy and uh, Lisa Strom, who's now the head coach for Ohio state women's go by right. um you know we were just talking and you know she was like well you know you you chip it you know like a like you're a plus 12 you're, you know showing like what my handicap would be and i'm like no that's because you gave me a two putt from 12 feet okay. <laughs> I'm like you gave me a one putt like, yeah. I, like i chipped it inside of this little circle that didn't exist i'm like no no i putted it from 12 feet tapped in my one footer you just gave me a chip to inside this small circle looks like I chip it amazingly and a one putt and I putt it great. I'm like, that's not what happened there. So I think those are some stats that you see. And even the fairway stats, like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's dicey and the driving stat just to give you, I mean, cause I know where I'm at in driving and it is definitely at the, towards the bottom, but on the corn fairy, we only me measure on two holes. For driving distance. Right, yeah. they do the same thing on the PGA Tour. No, no, PGA is measuring them all. But you mean for that actual reading? I think for the driving distance stat, just for that specific stat that oh, they post, sure. they only I think they only use two holes back and forth. I, I, I mean, they don't use shot link on the on the corn ferry. 
No. In terms of uh, no, we don't have that. So we just have two people on those holes. Gotcha. Brand right. And that's what's weird out there. I mean, half the guys don't even hit drivers. That's what makes it even worse. They drive around every hole. Um, all right. I wanna I wanna I wanna get to a couple things with your so it said that you turned pro in two thousand six, but you didn't play your first corn ferry event until two thousand nine. So what were what was going on those couple of years after you got out of Xavier? I graduated 2006. I head out to uh, California and I caddy at a club and I do Q school. I don't make it. And I play on like the, I sign up for the U S pro golf tour and I caddy at the hideaway out in Palm Springs. I get a house with a buddy of mine that had just gotten out of the Marines and he was getting ready to go to um, Blackwater so we got a house together. I'm caddying. I sign up for the U.S. Pro Tour. I crush it. I play great. I qualify. It costs 6000 to be a member of this tour. Tom okay. Kidd runs this tour. We all put up $6,000. The guy that's running the um, – I move out there to play the Spanos Tour with a couple guys from college. And the guy that's running the Spanos Tour is like, I'm not competing against this guy, so I'm folding my tour. He had a great mini tour going, the AG Spanos Tour, the guy that owned the Chargers. Okay. So he folds his tour. We all sign up for this U.S. Pro Golf Tour. Everybody finally is like, pull out, pull out, pull out. It's too late. You've put your money in. I go mm -hmm. qualify. Strillman was playing on it at the time. Okay. Me and him play the first event in Texas. I'll never forget it. Man, I had a wild time with my mom, my grandma's brother, Harmon, Andy Harmon in Texas, who I'd never met. Um, I played good there. I finished like 20th. And then they just folded the tour up. Oh, and they, break. so they had, they had used a, a bunch of money to pay that off from the year before and they just take everyone's cash and they leave. So everyone's high, left high and dry. They take like 800 grand from, you know, 150, whatever, 200 guys. I think you got more than that. So I just caddied all season. Okay. Left California, go to Chicago, drive my truck back to Chicago. And I'm um, just playing there, doing, you know, work with my dad and my brother. And then I'm like, I'm going to go. I do Q school, play the Illinois Open that year, that type of stuff, state opens. And then I'm like, I'll go to Orlando where the Hooters tour is. They got a good mini tour down there. I know some guys doing down there. So I got a house with a couple of guys down there. That would have been 07, 08. Moved in with some guys, did the Winter Series, played that season. Is that when, like, Ted Potter was winning? Every, oh every other event. Dude, so I play this turkey game. Everybody loves the turkey game, right? And so this Ted Potter, him and Jeff Core, these guys, I, I can't even tell you, man. It was it was like a show you would just love to watch. You're talking about going up and down a range. So these guys are winning nonstop. And uh yeah, you know, I'm playing Hooters now that summer. And I'm just like, I gotta get I gotta get a practice round with these guys. Like, I gotta see how they're winning, I gotta see what they're doing. Okay. And I'll never forget playing with these dudes. I'm like, dude, this Ted Potter's got this quick little crazy, you know, whatever he's got. And then boom, like he gets to a putt. I'm thinking it's like, I remember the first time we had a putt next to each other. I'm thinking, you know, cup and a half a break, maybe two cups. It's pretty quick. Going to like let this thing break in. I mean, he gets up there like right edge and just pops this thing, you know, boom, goes in these guys. And so, I just learned so much from him and Jeff playing and we would play this turkey game, you know, and so obviously you want to make three birdies in a row. That's the name of the game. And it's got some other stuff, you know, par fives, four under and bogey free. But so I played that. Um, that was like 2008, you know, played 2009, played pretty good. And uh, I met uh, what I meet my wife uh, right around then. And then I played that national pro tour, kind of the same thing, tried to start up. Um, but this guy that had this national pro tour, the beauty of it, he had the best golf courses there was. So we went and played TPCs all over the country. TPC uh, San Antonio, which I played in a Corn Ferry event last year. We went and played um, up in San Francisco. We played something off. So it, he had awesome courses. Um, I played with him that year, and then I got to final stage that season. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 2000, 2012, we got 20, uh, 21 events. Yeah, so I got conditional that year after 2011. I played 2011, I played that other tour, so I got status in, right at the end of 11. 
or made it made it to finals at the end of eleven. All right, so 2012 Mexican Open T6. That was uh, one of the highlights of the year. Some guy I never heard of won it, uh, but notables in that field. Just so, just a uh, T29 Russell Henley, T23 Adam Long, T17 Adam Hadwin. What? A, you know what? I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ask that question. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Let's go to that year just real quick because I'm. I got to tell this story. People love it. All right. So the tournament before that, did you see the result? No. Was it in Colombia? Tournament before Mexico was the BMW. I'm leading going to the final day on Sunday with Jimmy I, Troy on my bag. I missed this. I'm, okay. And we're playing, and I'm just not playing well. We're with Robert Streb and – I believe Steve Alker. And it's Steve Alker on like 14 at one point says, bro, can I buy your drive for $10,000? You this little driver out there. Anyways, I'll never forget it. We're on 16T. I think I'm even on the day. We're not going to win. And I'm in like sixth. And one of the caddies who I remember saying, like, you may not win, boys, but like this is where you make your money. I just remember, like, first time, like, thinking about that. And I was like, what's he talking? I bogeyed 16, 17, and 18. <laughs> TV's got a specific time slot, so they got nothing else to fill, right? Uh -huh. so they're showing us me gas it in. I finished, like, 26, and I'm on conditional that year. Okay. So I need every dollar I can get. I make my first start. I make check. So I, I come back, and, I mean, I am just – I'm – crushed right mm -hmm. I'm just like jesus christ i just fucking blew you know my yeah. you know i'm and my girlfriend at the time is jackie and i just remember coming home and she's like hey like it's just one tournament you're gonna crush it in the next tournament like doesn't matter like i know you can do this tomorrow's another day like you're gonna take the dog to the park like you normally do like work out yada 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 like she said that and like right then i just was like bam I went, woke up the next morning. She went to work. I got a wedding ring that day, that morning. Got proposed that night. There you go. And then went on our, uh, you know, got engaged. We went to Tampa for the weekend. And then I went to Mexico. And boom, I found myself in the exact same spot. I was on 16T. And I'm like, I'm not going to win. But like, let's, you know finish this thing off. And I think I finished birdie par birdie and I finished, you know, six or something. I was in 10th and I finished six and I'm like, well, fucking lesson learned. Let's go. There you go. It was, it was one of the, one of the times I look back, I was proud of. A little engagement swag. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, that's great. There's a uh, whole story during that engagement thing, but I don't want to get into that. It's funny. You mentioned uh, Stephen Alker. Uh, is there something about that Utah championship that you, that golf course that you really like? You, have a T, you had a T7 there, a T16 the year after? Josh Broadway. What's that? Josh Broadway. I don't know who that is. Cross-handed golfer, my man. Okay. Best cross-handed golfer there ever was. I believe I played with him both Sundays. You know, it's like who you're playing with in your group. But that course in uh, Utah was awesome. The first course, uh, uh, Willow Creek, where Wilcox shot 59. Okay. Um, that course was great because – um, although it was short and you're at altitude, kind of forced everybody to the same spot. And if you got aggressive, the greens were fast, they were firm. So if you were bombing drivers up by the green, it didn't do anything. So, you know, it was more of a position course, which, you know, if I can get the driver out of Kokrak's hands, like that's good for me. I got you. All right. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a position course. That's a iron course, shot makers course, if you will. Uh, Steve Alker won that year, 2013. By the way, I mean, when you finished T16, well, you just you mentioned him before. I had him in my notes. Beautiful. That was funny. All right, I'm gonna try to go through this quick. Just some things I noticed. I was looking. 2014, 22 events. Seems like a full season. Yeah. The WNB Golf Classic. You finished T15. Andrew Putnam won. Uh, but you were two, T15. Do you know who finished T31? And Two guys finished T31 in that tournament. Do you have any idea where I'm going with this? Sanders Shoffley. No, good guess. Um, Justin Thomas and uh, Tony Fina. 
Both finished T31. So when you're playing in a tournament, like, I don't know, so it's 2014. Justin Thomas isn't really Justin Thomas yet. Tony Finau isn't really Tony Finau yet. But can you see that? Like, it, like you see so, that guys out on the range and you see those guys hitting balls and well, they're, they're young. And does that do anything to you? I, I didn't notice it with Justin Thomas. I'll be completely honest, but he was a lot younger than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony, for sure. So, like, go back to that national pro tour I was on. Uh-huh. Our tour championship was at, um, God, it wasn't at Desert Mountain. Where the heck were we? Where they had the match play in Arizona. Um, we're out there, you know, and the winner's getting, I mean, it was getting over 100 grand. You know, all of us were going to get nice. But I played with him, um, I think, every single round. Okay. You know, and it's it, it's one of those things where, you know, I've been saying it for years. It's a guy like Tony, a guy like Kokrak. Yeah. I mean, dude, when he's on and he's hitting this driver, like it, it's a different ball game. Like that's how I feel. Yeah. I'm what, you know, it's like a, it's like a, an average golfer watching me all of a sudden I'm like, Holy shit. This guy just took it over this bunker. That's three thirty, and it's still going. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, Okay, you know, now I'm back there. I got three wood in my hands to a par five that he's flipping sand wedge into. It's like, how long can you can you keep up with that? It's it's hard. So yeah, I mean, I've I've always thought the game of golf, I mean, the guys are huge now and they're getting bigger. Like it's yeah. always, I thought golf and hockey, you know, didn't have the best players. You know, no, no knock to any of those guys, but um You're I, listed at you're listed at five ten, one sixty. Yeah, I'm pushing like 168 right now. There you go. A little like, beefy boy. Get it out there. Yeah, really, really beefing up over here. <laughs> All right. Um, at the uh, United Leasing Championship, you had a T15. I was really going to shit on Sun Kang, the cheater, but I decided I'm, I'm just going to skip over that. No. But in that tournament, JT and Fina both finished T4. So they got they got you that week. I, I had an incident at the exact same course, uh, TPC Avondale. You're talking about Sung Kang at TPC Avondale. Yeah, with um with Joel Damon. Yeah, that yeah was- I had a similar incident with another player two times in the same round. Uh, really? Of course, yeah. But you're not gonna you're not gonna tell anybody who it was, are you? Was it him? It wasn't him. No, it wasn't him. No, no. But I mean, if you want to name drop that, that would be fantastic. Nah, that'd, be, like, that'd be a good get for me. Nah, I don't feel like dealing with him and his drama. They can figure it out themselves. Okay. I, I mean, it's all right. So if something like that happens, and word gets around, like in a locker room or amongst the boys, as they say, does that change? People look at that guy differently, or they are people. Yeah, are new? It's weird. Like, I think the one thing about golf people don't understand is like. And you do, but people do understand. You go play golf with some random people. Like, people do shit. They move around. They're they're making you finicky. You know, it, it, when you're playing in a professional event, everyone's trying to be courteous to each other or you're doing whatever. If you all of a sudden you're playing with your buddy, like I said, I played great in Utah. You know why? Because me and Josh Bar- Broadway, were, we were buddies. His caddy, Riggs, was the man. Well, I got along great. So there was just a nice vibe in the group, like – we were just playing to play. We were both kind of rooting on each other. He played good. I played good. Like, that's what we wanted to happen. You Now, all of a sudden, you know, you get somebody in your group and, you know, maybe you're not as cordial to them or you're not this way or you're that way. Yeah, there's stuff that creeps in on, on anything with, with people. So, sure, like, you get paired with some dude that's notably slow or notably a cheater. <laughs> I mean, you got to have your your ears up. You know what I mean? I mean, you've got – yeah, there's people out there. There was guys this year on the Corn Ferry. You know, there was a couple of guys that had things where it's like, yeah, did you hear about so-and-so? And it's like, geez, like, you know, okay, here we go. So, yeah, I mean, it, that that definitely affects your group. It affects everything. But once a guy gets that reputation, though, like, is it really like – is it just over for him? Kind of. It's weird. And that's what I've never understood about golf, which, you know, I'm not saying I'm a cheater, but my God, you know, you grow up in like baseball and like all these other sports, you know, you're, you're trying to get any edge you can on anybody, you know, you, you, you try to slip one up in golf and people want to fucking murder you. I, you know, <laughs> all right. you're, you're never. All I, right. That's fair. That's a, that's an interesting take. There should be weird. I, I just should be more know. cheating in golf. People should be yeah. a little less lenient. I tell you, man, this course I'm at, Orange Tree, 
Love it to death. It is lined in OB steaks. So, you know, you got guys that are like, hey, I'm in over here. You look over. I'm like, you just hit it out of the St. Augustine, you know, like. <laughs> All right. Uh, the McLadry, that's your first PGA Tour event? I think so. Maybe not Tampa. No, I think, no, 2014 Tampa was, I have that somewhere. No, oh, no, no, you're right. Innisbrook. Was that at, Innis at uh, Innisbrook, the snake pit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a golf course that could kind of suit your game. That was fantastic course for me. I'll never uh, – I start on the back nine. I par 10. I three putt 11 for bogey. Par 12. 13 is the par three. Hit a great shot. Birdie. 14, par five, make par. 15, par three, birdie. 16, hit a great shot, miss it. So I'm one under. I'm in second. <laughs> I'm like, it's Thursday, granted. Yeah. Don't so you know I hit it to 10 feet. And I'm looking at this 10 footer and I'm like, this is, you just can't stop it. You know? So I say to my caddy, I'm like, I just should just hit it left edge and just, if it don't go in, we'll just pick up the pieces. He's like, you got to play break. I play some break. Thing goes six feet by. I miss that. It was all over after that. How do you, that was eight years ago and you just went through your back nine. Well, that was, it was yesterday. Yeah, I could do all of them. Yeah, I mean. How do you I, – that's ridiculous. Well, I mean, you know, I'm trying to build off of that. You know, I'm trying to figure out what happened there, you know. I mean, I was – Do you know well, who won that tournament? Uh, No. Kevin Streelman. You mentioned him before. Love but, Streelman. Great dude. Streelman. From, uh, from same area. So how did you get in that? Did you Monday qualify? I Monday qualified. Yeah, yeah, I – Monday qualified. Uh, I think we were in a playoff. Robbie Dust Farmer. That was my first event. Robbie caddied for me. Xavier Grad. Okay. Go Musketeers. Let's go. At the McGladry, did you Monday qualify for that also? Was oh, that we in the playoffs. Yeah. I beat, uh, what's his face? Not Tuna. I beat, um, beat a couple guys in that playoff, but I think it was Tuna at the end. It was. I beat Tuna? Yeah. I don't know who, who's Tuna. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Now I can't think of who it is. You know, oh. Tuna, you don't know who Tuna is? That's um, I don't. I don't think that's a known. I don't think that's a known name. I'll have to look that up. You would know it. Yeah, you do. You finished T63 in that. That was your first. You made the cut. You made the double cut. Oh, the uh, MDF or whatever? And shanked two balls. Well, congratulations for that. Do you, know who T and Shank too. Do you know who finished T66? One shot behind you? Tom Hoagie. Jason Kokrak. Are you guys close? Were you friends in college? Are you close now? Are you um not as close as we should have been? We were close. We um, you know, we were buddies in college, partied a lot um together, obviously, and played and traveled, but um yeah, I mean we 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 text every time we're in town, but not uh, not as close as some of the other guys that we are with, you know, on the team. What do you think of his uh, deal with the uh, Saudi golf? Is that like a, a sponsorship? Like, is that a thing, or you don't care? I I mean, I I I wrote a tweet out at somebody today. Like, he told me about it because I saw it on his bag in um, at Tory. Mm -hmm. Couldn't believe it. Media took four weeks to pick up on it. He had that thing on his bag at Torrey Pines. Uh -huh. Nobody talked about it until the British Open. I was dying. Like, oh, yeah. my God, Jason's got this on his bag. It's like, actually, it was there last month. Um, So my thought, and I've been saying it for, you know, ever since I got onto the Nationwide, was like, there's no players union. So there's no, like... You know, there's no control, and they basically it's 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 a dictatorship, and you see it through just different. You know, you have to play this very event, events. You know, drug testing, just all sorts of different avenues, and you're at the, the you're basically at their mercy. And so, I just always couldn't figure it out. Um, it, it it just seemed odd to me. So when this stuff first came out, and he was telling me about it, I I, I thought this couldn't be better for players. I think this is great. I think this is great for guys on the PGA Tour. I've been saying this entire time. Somebody, you know, the PGA Tour 
or the corn fair or the North nationwide. I mean, I know guys, you know, that got on the PJ tour that, you know, make a hundred thousand dollars for the whole season. You know, they, they spent 200 or $400,000. Like they are in the hole. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. the PJ tour, you get on there, the, the tour, you get a card. The tour should say, Hey, congratulations. Here's your card. First year rookie. $750,000 contract. Here's your one year thing. Phil Mickelson, it's your 30th year on tour. We're paying him 22.2 million, you know, plus yeah. purpose. And so I think this whole Saudi thing gives the players a little bit of leverage. I think they've got something to say. And it looks like, you know, these guys are all going to go play. You know, yeah. it looks like the BMW is taking a huge hit. The, uh, the, uh, you mean, uh, Pebble Beach? Oh, sorry. Pebble. Yeah. I'm on the, I'm on, I'm, I'm AT&T. I got you. I know you're talking yeah, on the, the lower circuit. The BMWs are <laughs> That's the best one anyways. Yeah. Xander's playing in Saudi this year. I don't know how I feel about that. That's your boy, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about this year coming up for him. Why? I just think that gold medal like changed things and Ooh. he's become like, like Ricky light, you know? And yeah. I'm worried. I just don't know. I just don't know what type of year he's going to have. Well, I think I, I, he might – the best analogy I can think of is that it's this might be like a Rocky three situation. Okay. He's got to like top five in the world, and now it's just like not – I love the guy, and I don't want it to sound like I'm name-calling or anything else, but there's a little like selling out I'm seeing that I'm worried about with the media and just – He's just different. He's just different. And I don't, I'm not getting a good, I'm not getting a good vibe, but it might be too early to be saying that. I got to see, I got to see what happens at Tory, see what happens at Phoenix. But I hate that. I hate the fact that he won that gold medal. And I, I mean, you, you think now that he's won the gold medal, he just, he, he's got it all. He doesn't need anything. And he's, he's got his, he's, he's relaxed. You think he's pulling the, didn't everybody just say like Rory McIlroy was like relaxed a couple of years ago and like he, he's done and he doesn't care and like he's just, you know, this. And, and then he came. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry. I think your boy Xander is going to be just fine. I would. I just think it could go like I just think it can go two ways. And I said this like the day after he won the gold medal because you saw it at the Ryder Cup. Like he's become like this this darling now. Like he's not the he's not a lively underdog anymore. Now he's now he's a top five player. Everybody knows who he is, and he's. I just don't want him to lose that edge, you know. Ah, no, he's fine. I, I think he's. Uh, yeah, no. I don't want him to be, but he he's won once in like three years, and I don't want him to become some like a Ricky Fowler type. No disrespect to Ricky, but Ricky's like a – people mock Ricky, you know, because he gets all this pub and he gets all this stuff. And when it comes to – when it comes to big time moments, I don't think was anything near Xander. Xander's has been pretty significantly better, no? I don't know the numbers, but just in my head, I would say Xander's has been much higher, playing at a much higher level. I mean, I feel like Ricky's – best thing before he really won was that like he had a couple you know he topped forward in a bunch of majors which is great but like mm -hmm. i don't know i think xander's won he got a few majors he's won a gold medal now like i think he's still skyrocketing i wouldn't be i hope so i got be yeah, 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 right i didn't mean to turn this into a xander thing i pumped the brakes even though he did he tried arm lock and i'm an arm lock guy and yeah can i ask you about that I mean, he did that the, like the week before the U.S. Open, an event, yeah, and his, an event in his backyard that he was waiting his whole life to play, and a week before the freaking Open, he's switching, switching arm lock, switch the arm lock. Yeah, that's... is that odd? I don't. I mean, I don't. I went like... nuts that week. <laughs> I, went nuts. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe that he did that. Like I, I don't know. I mean. That's like I said, man, golf's just weird. You know, some guys don't change a putter for 15 years and some guys will change every two weeks. Yeah. You know, one of my best friends is Jim Renner. You know, Jim, Jim and I are complete opposites, you know, and it's like, you know, he's, he likes to change it up and look for a different spot or get an angle on this or, you know, try something new where I'm, 
I kind of want to mold the crafty club that I got. So I don't okay. know. But, but if they announce it, they they do to the arm lock is a little bit, but honestly, I put the arm lock in and it, it felt great right away. So like, I, I don't even notice it's there. Okay. If they announce the U S open at your home course there in Orlando and you're like, okay, I'm going to play this event in six years and it finally gets there and you're in it. And a week before you're like, you know what? I, I'm going to change my putting. I'm going to change my putting style. And then because you missed a couple of putts, you you fell from contention over the weekend. Wouldn't that, looking back, wouldn't you know, that have been a mistake in judgment? It, it sounds bad when you put it that way. I, 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 I get it. But, you know, like I said, guys are changing. These guys are, I mean, he's obviously really good for a reason. Yeah, I know. It's, it's you know, and it's not like, I don't know, especially putting at Tory, those greens, you know. I'm not. I, I, I'm not uh, gonna say it was a bad move. I, I'm not gonna say like. I, I. I don't. You know. I think if it's something that he thought would work and put him in the best chance. You know, like my whole thing is like he's he in his mind he's given himself the best chance to win. Mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not using that putter because he's like, well, I'm gonna just try this. He's putting it in because in his mind he's convinced himself I need this putter to make those putts, and. At the end of the day, that's what you need to do. You got to convince yourself you're going to, you know. I I followed him for three days at Torrey Pines. He played so great tee to green and just – he just missed so many – there were so many moments, whether it was a par save or – oh, it, so, it was so frustrating. Those greens. I those understand, but he, know, he knows those greens. Yeah, but it's even like – I don't know. I mean, I, I was I was amazed. You know, I watched that tournament a couple times on TV, and I was surprised at like how slopey those greens were. Because I mean, it, it reminded me a lot of actually Orange Tree here, where you know you could hit a good shot and get yourself a ten foot putt, and you you got a ten foot putt where you're playing a foot of break. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you didn't want to hit it pin high. So while it looks like a great shot to everybody else, it's like, no, that's actually a terrible spot. Like. I don't know. I thought those greens, you could put it in some spots where it looks good, but you left yourself diabolical parts unless you were in the perfect spot. Yeah, there were there were a couple. That course was awesome, I thought. I don't know what you thought. Who did you play with that week? Uh, I played with a couple of guys from Europe who I couldn't even tell you their names right now. Sorry to them. Okay. Uh, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't give us they – wouldn't, they didn't hand out pin sheets, so you had to track everything on your phone. But uh, that was annoying. Yeah, no, I forgot. Uh, I played uh, – boy, I tell you, the one guy was great, though. Absolutely peppered a guy in the back, line drive. <laughs> the number five or something hit this low stinger. It didn't cut. You know, we yell four. We get up there. His ball's sitting fine. There's a group of guys, you know, our age, just sitting around drinking beers, laughing at the one dude. And he's like, yeah, it hit me right here on the back. He pulls up his shirt. I mean, he's got a welt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Jimmy Walker's almost hit me a couple of times. All right, so I want to talk about the. I want to get you out of here. We're running late. I'm sorry. Are you okay on time right now? Um, I'm great. I'm. I got nothing to do. Ray Hall's flight's delayed. He's flying in tonight. So. All right. So, you have a knack for qualifying for the U.S. Open. You've played in five of them. Uh, according, according to my math. Yeah. Uh, can you just talk? Can you just talk about like that process a little bit, like do, the the local qualifying or the sectional? Is that like your favorite golf course ever? How does this seem to be working for you that you're peaking that particular time? Uh, I mean, obviously, I've done it for me and Josh Teeter. We're just talking about it. We were he was joking. He's like, dude, I've done it like twenty three times, made it once. <laughs> He's like, you've done five in the last six. He's like. It, you know, I must have done it for, you know, since I bet I was like 14, from 14 to 30, I bet you I only made it through the first stage three times, four times. Okay. You know, like hardly even made it to the sectional. Remember in college, I'd be an alternate or, um, yeah, barely even made it through some of those things. And then uh, the local qualifying is here at Orange Street, where I live, which is okay. the golf course in the world. So... The first year I did it, 
and I qualified. It's 2015. I'm playing on the web.com. Might be corn. Might be nationwide. Web.com. Second hole, I hit my wrong. Hit the wrong ball. I do first. I hit the wrong ball in the second hole. Kid in my group hits my ball to five feet for eagle. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. I get up to go chip. I'm like, bro, this ain't mine. And he's like, um, uh, hang on, buddy. <laughs> and so, uh, next thing I know, Nicholas, hang on, buddy. Yeah. And uh, I hit the wrong ball. This kid hits the wrong ball. He gets all pissed off, right? We got to go back to the fairway. I hit it up on the green, make double bogey, get on the next hole, pop it up. I'm thinking, I, I tell my buddy Caddy and Joe, I'm like, all I'm thinking about is the story I got to tell all of our members now that I hit the wrong goddamn ball on two. Mm -hmm. On three, proceed to make par. Birdie, get into a playoff, and I, I win the playoff, and I go down to Jupiter. I play good in Jupiter at Bears Club. Okay. That's first year I make the qualifying. I just remember shooting 66 at Bears Club the second round, and I was like, that was one of the best rounds of golf I've ever played in my life. And Joe, he's 18. He's like, you think that's good enough? And I was like, dude, if it isn't, like. <laughs> and that's when Luke Donald ties me. He's got Jordan with him. So, like, MJ's rolling around there. And then one behind me is Sam Horsfield. He's, okay. He's an amateur. And the other amateur, I'm trying to think of who it is. I want to say it's the kid that I played with in Oakmont who's crushing it right now. Um, anyways, I just was like, these amateurs are amazing. Like these kids are, I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it was that close with how well I played. Yeah. Oppenheim and Renner had played in the U S open the year before they qualify up by you in Jersey. Um, they're from Boston and these are the guys I've traveled with for the last 10 years. They're like, you got to go up there. It's two sums. You play on awesome golf courses, two different golf courses down here in Florida. You play a 36, you know, 36 holes in threesomes in the heat. And so for the last four that I've made, I've come up to New Jersey and New York, and I've been qualifying up by you. And I've been playing at uh, Canoe Brook. I made two at Canoe Brook. And this I is a uh, summit, I think, right? Isn't yeah, summit? summit. And then I made the other two have been in uh, New York. I made uh, at Century Club in Old Oaks. How about that? Uh, I've been coming up there. I don't call it cherry picking, but I'm like, the amateurs up there, you know, the great amateur kids that are playing up there, they're not like the great amateur kids down here that are playing six, you know, 12 months a year. Yeah. And even the the assistant pros and head pros that I know up there, all great dudes. But, you know, the guys that are playing down here, you know, my head pro, Double D, you know, this guy, he, he shoots 72 like it's nothing. Okay. You know, you know that, that's, you know, and that's just average, you know, so it's. It's been easy. I, I'm not saying it's easier, but yeah, I've been going up to there. Um, but yeah, the locals has been at Orange Tree. Up there has been fun. I mean, it's been, the courses are awesome. And you got bent greens up there. That's what I'm used to. Like awesome tight golf courses, traditional, and you don't have to shoot 15 under. Have you looked at, uh, does, it, does the venue of where the U.S. Open is going to be make any does that change anything for you, or it's just, you know what, it's the U.S. Open? Like, it's in Boston this year. You just mentioned the guys, your buddies from Boston. Like, does that – Oh, yeah. Is that, like – is that added any motivation? I got my buddy Charlie here. He's a, he's a Boston guy. I want to go up to Boston for the U.S. Open. If you get in, you have to, you know, set us yeah, up. Yeah, no, one of our buddies. I mean, shout out to my man, Buckman. He's, uh, he's already said he's got two houses – and he's like, if, you know, you guys qualify, like you're taking a house. We got it right there because I guess from what he was telling me, that place is in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be interesting getting in and out or even just staying mm -hmm. from, I don't know. I don't know that golf club, Okay, but um, I don't know. Pebble was definitely the best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Oakmont was amazing though. I got to be, I mean, Oakmont, like I'm more, yeah, like Oakmont, give me, I mean, Pebble Pebble, I, for, for my game, and Oakmont, I thought both of them were great. Pebble was awesome, though. Pebble makes you use your entire bag. It gives you everything you want. I think 258 at Pebble Beach, by the way. Yeah, Good job. Yeah, I mean, I played with – 75 on Saturday. I played with Marikawa that day. Made triple on eight. 
He made triple on eight, or you I, made triple on it. He was behind me 15 yards in the left rough, gouges this five iron out of the rough and clears the you know the gorge and he bounces it up there. And I'm like, dude, I got that. I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I used a seven or six iron, opened up the face, my lie sucked. I hit this thing, it came out thick high, goes straight down into the water, drop, miss the green, chip on two putt, triple. Sander may or Morikawa makes birdie. So, okay, so Morikawa, he's not exactly a bomber off the tee. Uh, no. I mean, I don't know, he can hit it a little bit, but he's not a – that's not like – he's not known for that. Like, right. Now we're a coke rack. So when you see a guy like that, <laughs> and he – like I would just think that would be something that you would like, uh, like aspire to as somebody who doesn't have that distance in his bag. Do you see – but do you make correlations like that? Do you think like that? Well, I just don't know what it's like to see. Yeah, I mean, you're looking off in a different yeah. way than regular people. No, for sure. You're trying to see. Well, I mean, you're definitely looking at the guys, you know, like a, like so if you want to go there, route, like a Kevin Kisner, he's played with us, you know, uh -huh. he's been buddies with a lot of us. You know, I mean, he's not hitting it anywhere, and he's honest about it. You know, yeah. he's hilarious. You know, it's great. And, you know, he's – but he's saying, you know, hey, I can compete on these courses. I can't. But, I mean, yeah, you watch, you know, him get on a roll with a putter, and it's something. I mean, I remember playing with him in a Hooters event. He won the Hooters event at McCormick. And I remember he – I mean, he didn't make a bogey for the first two rounds. And it was just like, you know, it was like nothing. 66, 66. My buddy Kevin Bissett caddies for me to this day. Every time he's up in Montana right now, and well, he's been in Montana for every time he's like, just say hi, to, say hi to Kisner for me. He's like, he's my favorite golfer, you know, ever since we caddied and he kicked the shit out of you, and you know he's been winning. But yeah, I mean, watching those guys, you know, someone like that, yeah, I mean, they they're they're putting a premium on, you know, not hitting it as far, you know, but it's like I said, those guys, you're not going to be able to contain. I, I, you know, you're not going to be able to contain these guys that can just absolutely rip the ball and they can hit it straight. You know what I mean? So like a, a, a Jason Kokrak, for instance, you know, he, he might not hit it straight and long for, let's say, half of the events, but the half of events he does hit it straight and long on, mm -hmm. that advantage is he's going he's gonna to dominate. Yeah. And, and so – when you get a whole tour of you know guys like that, it, it yeah. makes it very hard for the little guy to compete. But you know you do see guys. You know you see Webb Simpson. You know you see Brendan Todd. I played a bunch with Brendan when he was struggling and doing Mondays. Like, yeah, I mean you got to beat him. I was just talking to Rob about it. Oppenheim. I'm like, dude, these guys. They. I, I'm not going to be able to beat dustin johnson ever and how far i can hit it or that so what do i got to do i got to figure out how to beat him on the putting green i got to figure out how to beat him from 100 yards in and that's yeah. you know we've been working with skip kendall who played on tour for years mm -hmm. um you know we're you know i'm trying different things you know with your your putting and you know wedges but you know even you know speaking on that you know all of a sudden now i'm looking at this skip kendall and he's got a whole different philosophy from what i've come and custom to so um yeah it's it's interesting but yeah i mean you gotta you gotta learn how to put it better yeah I, I, stats, I gotta put it better i think the golf course matters you know we're talking about a, a place like valspar i call it valspar but innisbrook yeah compared to like a tory pines you mentioned it before like you gotta take driver out of some of these guys hands that's Although, gonna, i thought tory was great I thought Tory was fine for the job. Well, that was a U.S. Open setup. I'm just talking about it like a big ballpark, you know. Right. As yeah, no, if that was in a general setting, it would be terrible. Yeah, no, no, that would be horrible. I needed to be – I needed to – like I needed the – where everyone was walking, I needed that to be hay. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it, those, those tournaments always are like that where they really penalize you if you're a couple feet off the fairway. If you're, you know, 20, 30 yards off the fairway, you're fine. All right, so this – Okay. Thank you for your time, by the way. We're no, running you. long. I have to not ask certain things, but I just want to ask about Tiger Woods real fast. Uh, whistling straights in the U.S. Open. He missed the cut. You made the cut. I want to know if that, that was something to be on your – Chambers Bay. Chambers Bay. Chambers Bay. That's what I meant. 
Yeah, that yeah. Was four straight. I was one and zero against Tiger at that point. 2015. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, if that was something that would be like on your headstone, defeated Tiger Woods at the 2015 U.S. Open. Like, do you have a, like a good? You've been playing golf a long time. Tiger Woods has been playing golf a long time. Before that U.S. Open, was that the first time you like you ever had any? Were at the same golf course at the same time. What was it like if you were you guys on the range together, like where you saw him? What was I tell you? I do remember. So, like that, that US Open at Chambers Bay was pretty neat in that, you know, if you've never been to Chambers Bay, like you come over this, like it's out onto the water. And it's like when you look down, you're looking down over the entire course. Have you been there? No. Do a reminder when you were fired and oh, God. Uh, Comment in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. I fired my father and the father's son. I went and found the lowest handicapped guy I could. He deserved that. I'm sure he did. <laughs> yeah, I went and got Tom Iner on. We had caddies. He was the man. That's very funny. Um, That's yeah, what it does. Coming down into Chambers Bay, you look over the course, and I just remember seeing like a thousand tents. Uh -huh. I was like, holy shit. Like, this, yeah. is, you know, this is the real deal. And like, it was me, Jackie, and Joe. We're driving down. We're in the courtesy car, you know. We all, you know, chubbed up, <laughs> and we parked the car. And I just remember we we come out, and I look over, and we see Tiger, and I'm staring at him. I mean, I don't think it's Tiger because it's one of those things where, and I, I guess you know, it's always like something, but like some guys, I'm always you know impressed when I see him. I saw LeBron James the first time in person. I was like holy shit, this guy's, you know. Yeah. But when I see some of the golfers, I'm like, you know, I'm looking at, I, I wasn't sure. And I was like, who is that guy? Like, he's in like gym shorts. And I'm like, what's he doing? And I was like, holy shit, that's Tiger. I'm like, you know, we're, I'm, like, I'm like, dude, that's it. You know, and I'm like, he isn't that, you know, he's all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, I go in the locker room. I'm like, you know what, he ain't, he doesn't look like that big superhero that I, in my mind I had him out to be because of, what he had done and he he is amazing but yeah also and then i get face to face and i'm like well there he is like this is he's not as intimidating as i thought and then you you get out and you go play some golf but never had any crazy tiger uh stories especially from orlando i never saw him. my buddy of fronty used to see him all the time at the gym but that was the first time i saw tiger was was chambers or like really i can't i uh i was walking score for him in 1999 at the PGA round one. The right. Bob May, was that the Bob May year? No, Tiger won. He beat Sergio when Sergio did the run. Up oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but the first day they gave you a number, and I think I was number like 55 or whatever, 51. And I'm like, oh, I got the end, and I had Brian Watts, Tom Watson, Tiger Woods. And I watched Brian Watts spank Tiger, and I <laughs> couldn't believe it. I think uh, Wayne Watt shot 66 or something crazy the first round. Uh -huh. Tiger shot like 71 or 70, but yeah, I was, you know, standing there with the board. I'll never forget that. That was one, you know, something I got hanging in my house. So definitely it's something I'll never forget. All right. I'm going to, I'm I make. I'm calling an audible here. Yeah. I really appreciate, I really appreciate your time. There's a couple of things I didn't get to. We're going to have to do this again at some point. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. Rapid uh, fire. What's that? I said send them on rapid fire. What do you got? No, no, no. I had like a whole bit planned, but I just uh I just want to know like what's uh what's your plan for uh twenty twenty two? Or what what is your what are you gonna be what are you gonna what are you going to be doing? May I ask you that question? I mean you know that's that's the question. No status, um, you know, feel like I'm playing unbelievable. Like okay. I said, I ate birdies and an eagle today. Um, but with no status, trying to go chase Mondays, especially at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. it's so hard. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you got to do these pre-qualifiers. So probably hanging for the next few months. I got to find something to do. I'm, I've I'm got a great relationship with Encore. Um, it's a golf ball company that's new. So looking to maybe do some stuff with them, but looking to do some golf stuff, looking to kind of dabble around and use some of my resources and, you know, try to 
make some money and chase some Monday. So yeah, once the time's right, once, you know, June hits May, um, try to do some Mondays when, when I think the, the picking's right. But for right now, I mean, for me to fly to say LA, go do all those Mondays like I've done in the past, it's just financially, it's just too much to try to do. And it's, you know, you're going out there against the best guys in the world and it's, you know, when it costs 2000 compared to $400, it's a big difference. So, um, be doing some Monday qualifiers, state opens, Colorado opens always been amazing. Alex Weiss just won that. He got, he's been playing awesome. Got full status. Shout out to that kid. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, some state opens, I'm going to jump back in the Florida open. Do they have sponsors exemptions in the, in the on the court ferry tour? They do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I know some guys. I've done junior clinics. I'll write some letters. Um, you know, I'm going to hopefully try to get one into BMW next year. I played with AJ Prasinski last year, buddy of mine, mm -hmm. with Robert Caddy, in which actually is going to be funny. Robert's going to be in the 48-49 category this year. So if he actually wants to try to play on a corn ferry, he can. So our joke is that Robert's going to play with AJ playing, and now I'm caddying. Mm. So I just went from player to caddy. It's yeah. Well, I was going to make a joke about that, but I – You can. It wouldn't be the first time I carried either of their jocks. So, yeah. um, you know, it would be fine. But, uh, yeah, there's, you know, there's sponsor exemptions. It's just, you know, try to stick with it because, I mean, honestly, like, you know, I'm playing too good to, to not try to go play somewhere. It's just tough, you know. And, I mean, unless Nagel's Bagels is hiring 37-year-olds. I know. swear to God this is the last question. And yeah. if this is too personal, you can tell me. All right. Fire. You lose your corn fairy tour card. What's that conversation like with your wife? Like you mentioned before, she's very, very supportive. That was the reason why you proposed to her in the first place. Dude. You fired dude. you to a T6 in Mexico. Yeah. Man, woman's always cool. been by your side. She's been more Adrian Rocky three than Adrian Rocky four. But what's that? Where's the, how's the support there? I saw you did yeah, before. I'm telling you, I was down. I'm like, it's it's done. Like I, you know, I was so down on myself. And she's like, dude, give it a year. Like it's fine. We've done this before. Like you've done it before. There's nothing to worry about. Like we're good. We're healthy. We're living our life. You're you're still playing awesome. Like don't sweat it. Like just enjoy. And she's been even stronger and better. So it's crazy so i mean i love her even more for that it's 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 wild because i've seen guys and i've seen people that don't have that type of support and it's it's awesome to have so yeah no i mean i'm you know we're having some tough conversations but yeah no she's been absolutely 100 percent. like dude you're better than those guys i know you are you know you are like let's you know figure out how to make it so you know, it's been awesome. You know, it, it, it sucks, you know, like, you know, it sucks that, I, you know, there's times, you know, it's funny when you talk, you know, I'm going to go play, you know, I'm going to go to my kids, you know, baseball game or this and that. It's like, oh, you play golf. And I was like, well, you know, I did kind of, you know, like I do, I do when I have my, when I have a card, all of a sudden you don't, it's like, oh, this guy, oh, who's this free agent bum over here? <laughs> you know? It's hard to, it's hard to explain the people that don't follow the, yeah, the yeah. how it works, I mean, but so, um, but it, it, it's been awesome, man. And no, she's been honestly nothing but beyond anything I could ever imagine in terms of supportive and, you know, all in it. It's funny. I just uh, took my kid to school this morning, my youngest, and there was a picture in the car and he handed it up to me. It was us at Tory. I was like, oh, that's you in the picture. He's like, yeah, I want to go again. Yeah. Like, yeah, you do. I'm like, I do too, buddy. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one, buddy. Let's go. So, um, you know, no, but it's been awesome. They're so supportive. I can't tell you how 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 great it's been. Is it uh, – so you don't feel any – like, do you put you put pressure on yourself or you don't feel any pressure from – Oh, I mean, I put – I feel so much. It's, you know, it's like – but, I, you know, it's like any other job, I guess I would say. You know, I, yeah, I feel a lot of pressure. But, you know, it's – something that people deal with in any other kind of job, I would assume, you know, and it's fun, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's tough sometimes when you, you know, you don't perform as well as you want, but that's something that you got to look back on and figure out, well, why didn't I? And that's something I've been, you know, really taking a hard look at it. Like what, what really was holding me back? And like you were mentioning, I really, you know, and it's, you know, it's a 
some a reoccurring thing you always hear i putted bad i put you know or i didn't hit it but for me it's it's been putting so it's something i'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm searching, you know, I'm always looking to putt better. I think everybody is, but, um, yeah, no, it's, it's been something I, I just, I know that, you know, I can play good enough to, to showcase what I can do. You know, I've got a lot of awesome shots and ways about playing and just, you know, the way you carry yourself, just, it, it's fun. So, and it's weird at the end of the day, golf is, it's not that you're an entertainer, but you know, those guys are out there entertaining. I mean, Tiger is feeding off that. And well, people let's, keep, let's keep Tiger out of the, out of the, Tiger doesn't belong like in that. Yeah, it's fine. Tiger's an entertainer, but that he doesn't count. I just, when I was going through your OWGR and I'm looking at where you finished and I see some of the names that are behind you. Now this is five, six, seven years ago or whatever. But these guys, some of these guys, like the Russell Henleys of the world and the uh, Jason Kokraks, like these guys are, they're on tour and like you, you beat you beat those guys and you know golf's a fickle game and you can get hot at the right time, you can make some putts and well that's why it's you're making cuts at the U.S. Open like it's not, it's the differences are so minute it could be a bad lie or just a one flub chip and who the hell knows. Like I said on in the Pebble, I, I looked at the stats. You, you, we should. I, I, I'll try to confirm it. I thought I I seen a stat that says I was T sixth in proximity to the hole for the whole week. I mean, That's I was good. striping it. You know, but like you said, I mean, I make triple on Saturday. You make triple on number eight Saturday at the U.S. Open. You ain't making a move anywhere. Yeah. You know, I played with Kisner the last day. I hit it the shittiest I did the entire week, and I think I shot seventy two. Because I was playing with Kevin and we were just having a good time. And we both 71 on Sunday at Pebble. I have it here. Well. Yeah, 71. Oh, even par. They convert number two. Which, you know, I but anyways, yeah. I mean, that's but that's going back to the, you know, playing with, you know, people you're comfortable with. Just, you know, we were out there, like I said, I played bad that day, but you know, we were just going through the motions, you know, just having fun. And it was actually, you know, I was having fun. Well, I just I'm fascinated by the the by the journey. Uh, I really appreciate you giving me all this time and answering a lot of my stupid questions. Some of them I didn't even get to. Yeah, um, yeah. we're gonna we again. Hopefully, we again. hopefully we could do this again. Yeah, uh, I would like to. I'd like to. Uh, you know, I'd like to get in on some of your uh, picks here. You know, I know you're a Giants guy. Yeah, are you a Giants fan? You, you've met. You've made. Uh, you've no, met my my buddy caddied for me in Springfield this year, and we. I think because I follow you on Twitter, all of a sudden I get Giants feeds. Uh -huh. and so leading up to the season, we thought the Giants were going to be amazing, so we put a bet on the Giants. No, you shouldn't have done that. It was, it was. A, I mean, that's like betting on the Bears, but worse. Uh yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, you know, yes, it is. Yeah, maybe, maybe it is worse <laughs> yeah. to bet on the Bears. It is. They play. They play in a couple weeks. Um. All right. Well, we're all going to be rooting for you. Cheers, man. I really appreciate your time. I'm going to hit end broadcast here. Then we'll say goodbye. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to put this out there on Twitter. If you could just – I'll mention you. You could send out a retweet or whatever. And uh, I Thanks again for doing this, and uh, we will talk soon. Thanks for everybody who's watching. Tell somebody pretty insightful interview with uh, a big-time grinder out there, yeah, Andy Pope, big grinder. All right, I'm going to hit end broadcast. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. We'll talk, we'll talk to you guys soon.